Hi, hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode, you know, that we've all been waiting for because I've been taking way too much time uh, recently, these last couple episodes in between, but yes, I'm back, what's up dudes, another episode of Egg Wars, hope you're all doing well, thank you for tuning in, and uh, you know, before we get started today, um, I want to just give a shout out to a dude. If you've been rocking with me for a hot minute, this goes back to like October, November time. I can't remember exactly when it was, but basically I had a little beef with a dude who uh, I've known for a while. We had some history in a good way, or like we had so we had a little beef going on. It was me and a guy uh, with a username of the number one guy dude. Well, I just want to say for the record that beef is 100% squashed, water under the bridge, and uh, we're all back rocking legit and it's all good so i guess there was still some uh, people that were and I, I know sometimes we have these dramatic things that go on you know amongst people who are you know really uh, always involved with what i'm doing so you know right now uh everything's gravy everything's totally chill everything's all cool on uh, on my end <laughs> there's no every, everything's good everything's good so i hope everything's going good for you guys as well so say you know we got to go ahead and crack that sip I'm rocking with the Pure Zero Rockstar Grape, and I don't remember if this is even when I drank the last time I did an Egg Wars, but I'm going to tell you like this, why am I drinking the Rockstar? I'm going to break something down for you guys real quick. First off, I found these on sale uh, for a dollar a piece uh, recently, and I stocked up heavy. I was basically going out. I was like when Boogie goes to the store to buy his mayo, he's cleaning the shelves off. I was cleaning the shelves off. I bought all of this particular type of rock star. I'm going to break you down a little bit of scientific knowledge here. Why exactly did I go for this particular kind of rock star? Okay, and what and you know why why you know why am I forsaking the monster sips, the OG sips for these? Well, first off, let me wet the whistle a, a tad Martin here and I'll tell you why. I mean, the flavor is not crazy. It tastes a lot like a grape lollipop, like an artificial grape flavor. It's not even like a necessarily like a grape soda. I just that's like what I get from it is like it tastes like a fucking grape Jolly Rancher maybe. That's what it tastes like. But Rockstar Pure Zero. Now this is not an ad or anything. And once again, don't even buy energy drinks. Energy drinks they're gonna give you cancer. They make your dick fall off. They give you AIDS. They're really bad for you. Don't even drink it. Okay, I'm not promoting this. But why do I make that particular choice? First off, the rock stars tend to be cheaper than the monsters. And I came to realize that these monster rehab sip, no matter what, they're the ultras. You look at them, they have like, I think the most, I think the, the rehabs actually have more caffeine than the regular ultras. I think the ultras have like 140, 150, something like that, 160 maybe. And then like the rehabs have like a little bit more than that. But these, I'm getting these for like a buck. And I don't know how this is going to show up mirrored or whatever because of the, uh, the camera. That's 240 milligrams here for a buck. You know, you got all your same B vitamins and stuff. I don't know, man. It just seemed like the logical choice. You get the higher boost, cheaper price. I mean, you know, yeah, I could just pop no doses. I've done that before, but for some reason, that makes me sick when I take too many of those. These are like, it's like the dilution of it. It's like it's a more moderatable consumption. You dig what I'm saying? So for what it's worth... For what it's worth, that's where I'm at uh, with that. So <laughs> that is uh, that's all I got to say about sips. Well, actually, no, not quite. Um, I maybe I throw those cans through those ones uh, in the recycling. There was also a new sip that I tried recently that I drank all of them because <laughs> it's been so long in between egg wars. I ended up just drinking all of them before I got around to this particular uh, episode here. But there was a uh, sip called Celsius Heat. That I gave a try, and that one it was actually 300 milligrams of caffeine, and it was only at this one small shop I was able to find them at, and so I'll have to go back and stop back by there sometime, see if I can get some more. But 300 milligrams of caffeine, and it was like this, like they had like pre-workout in it too. Now I've, I've drank the Bang creatine energy drinks before, and now when I take creatine, that just makes me aggressive. It not, it's not exactly like a good thing. <laughs> like, I mean, it, I mean, I feel kind of pumped up, I guess. It's not bad, but like, I was drinking one of those when I was out in Los Angeles last month, and like, I just wanted to fucking like fight people, <laughs> basically. I was going, you know, how like they had in the, uh, remember back when the whole Elliot Rogers situation happened back for the Isla Vista 
you know, they had that expose where that guy fed, what was it, some British newspaper, or whatever, he fed him bad knowledge and said that the reason why he went on the shooting was because he was taking creatine and it made him go crazy. That's a meme that's been around, you know, for a while that creatine is like this crazy drug. But I mean, this didn't have creatine in it, this, this, uh, Celsius heat, but when I drank that, man, I don't know, it had like citrulline, uh, a bunch of caffeine, whatever was in it, it was getting me fucking, like, hyped up, like, on a whole other level, so that was, you know, if you, if you see that out, if you see that anywhere, that is my seal of approval, that that's gonna get you turned up, that's gonna get you going if you see that brand anywhere. Now, enough about the energy drinks, enough about that, once again, don't drink them, they make you, uh, they, they, they're bad for you. And I don't endorse them until they start paying me or until they start giving me some free shit. So, hey, listen up, guys. You know, until then, don't buy them. But today, I have a couple things I want to talk about. And um, when I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about in this particular episode, it occurred to me that in my memory, from what I can recall, I do not believe that I've ever done an Egg Wars where I talked about anime. Now, I want to, for the record... I'm not super into anime a ton these days. Now, I support anime. I support that industry. I support, you know, the uh, otaku, whatever. You know, I I support what they do for the most part. But once upon a time, I was really highly a lot more uh, of a weeb. I was really, really a weeb. I was really into all that shit. And the reason why this kind of sparked up for me to think about is that recently now, if you may have been up on this particular news, uh, Steam, they are now going out of their way to, uh, basically shut down, remove, uh, any like sexually explicit anime styled products on their platform, or at least they're either removing them or they're giving like an ultimatum to these studios, these developers, these producers, and so on and so forth, that they are going to censor their product, or they need to like basically censor it even more. They need to like take out anything naughty, even though that there's a bunch of other uh, video games on the platform, like, you know, a couple examples that I've seen coming up, you know, in Witcher, uh, Grand Theft Auto, and having sexually explicit content. Now, I can understand, you know, to be honest, when they started putting the VNs and stuff on Steam that were sexually explicit, I was kind of, I was a little bit surprised, you know, I mean, I guess it, they're, yeah, it's video games, you know, Americans, you know, it's, uh, it's funny, you know, it's, that I should say this, it's been that idea that generally in the past Americans have been more like, uh, anti-sex and now, you know, now American women are, you know, fucking super whores, so it's kind of funny how that turned out, but, but, you know, I guess you wouldn't see, you know, back, that's been a controversy for years. You know, that they would have reserved like the NC-17 ratings for like sexual things, but you could have people's heads getting blown up and stuff and all kinds of gruesome murder and that would still be rated R usually or rated M. So I was a little bit surprised when I started seeing these come out on Steam. And the thing is that they, they were on Steam and a lot of them were actually already censored in the way that you had to go, like if you were, were to purchase one of these titles... You would have to go to like a third party website or you'd have to contact the developers directly and they would be able to supply you with like a, a game file that would fully unlock any sexual content in that particular product, whether it was a visual novel or, you know, one of these other games like Honey Pop or there's like, they have some other games that are like RPGs, match three games, puzzle games, all these different things where they'll have like a sexual aspect to it. It's interesting to me when I saw that uh, when I when I started receiving this news, you know, those people who I talk to and they're really like they hate anime. They're like, oh, "Who gives a fuck? Like anime is for fucking weirdos. It's for creeps." I cannot. I just don't. I refuse to go into that mindset. You know, I refuse to be an anti-anime person. The way I see it, I feel like anime is great. I think it's a fantastic thing. Now. I don't think that it is probably healthy for grown men to be, like, fanatically obsessed with anime. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying, like, if you're going around and, like, everybody... It kind of depends on how you're looking at it. Because I'm looking at this in, like, the most optimistic way. I'm still a guy who, like, I want to be the best man I can be. I would like to have a family and a wife and all that. The picket, you know, uh, like, like I said, thinking optimistically here. In that case scenario, you know, I would like, you know, it would be great if... We could all kind of go that way and kind of, you know, try and make our society the best that we can make it, you know. 
I kind of see the anime as a bit of an escapism thing, but at the same time, I definitely have been in a position in my life where, like, I was a guy who would, you know, be ready to bring a body pillow out on a date to a restaurant, and if anybody looked at me crossways, I'd spit in their face, you know, so I've been on that side, too, so I can understand how it is, but, so, you know, people, they look at it, and they're like, oh, you know, God, like, how are you, like, how are you, like, a grown man, and you, uh, you know, you're posting pictures of anime girls all day and stuff like that, you know, I can see both sides of it, but I think that having the industry there, having the option there, and being able to support that option is a good thing. I think it's important because when we look at the Western media, and I'm not saying that you could just you could just say fuck all media, you know, kind of go like full and prim and just be like fuck all this shit. I'm just going and I'm going in a woods. That's cool too, but. You know, if we're in a dichotomy where you're looking at, like, Western versus Eastern media, I mean, you'll look at, this is something that's been around, too, even before this whole Steam issue, you'll have games that will come from Japan, or, the, you know, from Japanese developers, and they'll bring, you know, American teams will start localizing them, and they'll be like, oh my goodness, look at these, these women have, they're, they're, there's so much cleavage exposed, oh, there's, uh... There, there's this, there's this sexual dialogue, oh, you know, and they fucking dress them all, you know, they fucking shrink their tits to non-existent, they dress them up in a fucking full carpet or whatever, you know, and all these different things, and it's always, like, these female developers, they get these, like, these women are so, uh, like, threatened by men being attracted to a fucking drawing instead of them, that they go all fucking bitch mode, and they have to go and da 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 you know, and fucking no fun loud and all that, you know. So... That's one thing, too, is, like, you'll have these games that come out of Steam, but a lot of them, I'm not somebody who's going out and buying every single anime-themed release on Steam. It's something that I definitely have kept an eye on. I bought Gal Gun when that came out, you know, back a couple years ago. Um, you know, <laughs> there's there's different games that, you know, I'm not... I, I like visual novels, but I only like... I'm kind of picky about them. I like strategy RPG games. I like, I've like i fucking played through Sengoku Rants a handful of times. Kamidori Alchemy Meister. I don't keep up on those quite as much as I used to, so maybe there's some other similar games like that where, yes, there was definitely like a very heavy sexual aspect in those games, but there was just a, t- a sort of... Uh, sort of a gameplay in those games that I just wasn't finding in Western releases. It wasn't quite, you know, it just wasn't wasn't really fulfilling what I was looking for. It wasn't really scratching that itch with some of the gameplay that I was finding in some of these games. I mean, shit, even going back, you know, I remember playing, you know, on fucking Newgrounds, like the dating sim games there, stick RPG. There was just something about, like, the way these games operated where it was like, you know, boom, All you gotta do is just go click on gym or click on school and boom, you gain a point. Boom, you gain a point. Boom, you gain a point. And like, you know, just, just a simple progression, you know, with some humor mixed in, maybe some erotic thing mixed in there. It was this good blend that was just an enjoyable thing. And, you know, and so I was kind of looking out on Steam for games like that. So when they come out and they're talking about all this, like, oh my goodness, it's, oh, it's so exploitative. It's so, it's, it's horrible. It's terrible. We need to ban it all. You know, um, I'm a little bit pissed off about it, you know, I kind of, I've been sitting on Steam now for a while, and I've had, like, I've, I have a shit ton of Steam games, you know, like, and I still, I continue to accumulate more on a fairly regular basis, and, uh, you know, lately I've been kind of, I'm like stuck at, or I have like a certain level cap, you don't know about Steam, basically, like, you can, you, or you have like Steam levels and badges and things, and essentially, pretty much, you, uh, get like these trading cards from playing a game a certain amount, and you need to, like, use these trading cards to make badges, and if you get the badges, you level up. The thing about me with the levels is I don't really care much about that, but the levels, you need to level up to get more friend slots, and obviously, I've been hitting, hanging at 450, I'm at, I'm at maximum friends on there, so I've been like, oh shit, you know, I probably gotta go drop, like, 10 bucks and go fucking swoop up, you get, your trading cards are, like, you know, anywhere from, like, probably 5 cents each, like, 10 cents each, depending on how popular the game is or how many people play it, so there's things to consider there, but... It's like, shit, I don't know, <laughs> I'm like sitting there, I'm like, mm, do I really want to go give them more money right now? Do I want to, because that's going right to them, that's not going to a developer, that ain't going to shit, that's going right to Steam, that's fucking money in their pocket, and all they do is sit around and make hats and trading cards and shit nowadays, so I'm like, shit, do I want to go give them more money when they're kind of like going against my interests? I'm not sure, and so thankfully I guess I've kind of, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't been swarmed with new Steam friend requests lately, but I've been a little bit concerned, I'm like, eh, you know, it's a practice that I don't agree with censoring, I think that that should be an open market. Even if you don't agree with it, I think that, you know, it's, uh, it's nice. I, I, I like, 
there's things about anime I like. I like, you know what, I have a waifu. Yes, I do. You know, and I have a, one of her, my figurines right here, for instance. You know, if you don't know, my my uh, waifu is uh, Mahiro Inami from uh, uh, Working. And so, like, I I can appreciate anime. I can appreciate all that. You know, I, I'm not as much into it as I used to be, but I think it's an important thing to have available. And so, I guess... Let me give you a little bit of my uh, anime style background here. How did how did I get into it? How did it all come around in the first place? I don't think I've ever talked about this on an Egg Wars before. So basically, for me, it goes back to I would say it was uh, I think my real first interaction. Well, I mean, you had like your Pokemon, obviously your Yu Gi Oh, your things like that around the turn of the millennia. But that wasn't really that was like that was more like it was anime style, or whatever. But it was like a Saturday morning cartoon. Type of thing. I for me, you know, I wasn't. Uh, I mean, you had your Pokemon games, and that was really probably the first, you know, so to speak. But obviously, a shit ton of people played Pokemon and never went any further than that. For me, where it kind of started to get more into like the, you know, really the anime viewing and interest and things like that was when they came out with Adult Swim on Cartoon Network. So I, I can still remember that. I can still remember, you know, because what was that? Two thousand one. And so I was like ten years old. And I uh, remember, you know, it would come on and you would have, you know, it was, it wasn't your Pokemon, like your Pokemon, everything was all squeaky clean and sanitized and Saturday morning cartoons and everything. But you have your anime on Adult Swim and there was like some adult themes there. And so I can recall, you know, when I very first started watching it, I'd be like, you know, it, it was like, oh, you could turn it on and say, oh, I'm going to watch this cartoon. But like, you would want, you wouldn't want like adults around because all of a sudden there might be a curse word or they'd be, you know, someone would make them look crossways. Maybe there's some big old anime titties jiggling around, you know. Whatever the case was, like, you know, it was like, oh, this is just my little, you know, it was like, you know, because it was like, it was like, it was cool, it was edgy in some you know, particular series. It was just something, like, that was totally new to me, and it was, uh, I really, really got into it then, and that was, I mean, you know, I try to remember, like, some of the first series that were on there were, like, Yu Yu Hakusho, that was something that I really enjoyed for a lot of years, even to the point where I owned physical copies of, like, DVD releases when it came out, and that's one thing about anime, if you don't know, they're terrible with their DVD releases. I think nowadays it's probably different uh, for like some of the bigger series like Dragon Ball Z uh, or things like that. They probably have a nice, decent box set of some kind. But, you know, like when you have a series airing in Japan, you know, you'll, they'll release like each episode on like a Blu-ray and it has like all kinds of bonus merchandise and shit like that. Maybe maybe this isn't every series, but it's been a few years since I've been, been kind of out of the loop here. But you could be spending like seventy or eighty dollars on a single episode for like some of these anime. You know, when I was buying, when I bought that DVD, I don't remember how it was like ten bucks or something. It had like three episodes on it. You know, which makes sense because you know I guess your DVDs have a certain type of runtime and everything, so whatever. But it was just like, you know, it was, it was not a, uh, it was, it was, in those times, it wasn't like you were going and buying, me personally, like going and buying a bunch of anime. It was whatever was on, like Adult Swim was pretty much, or Toonami. That's what you were getting. That's where you're being able to take in, you know, that, that was where it was at. So that was really like my first experience with it of getting knowledgeable about it, but that went on for a few years. And I think it was probably, it was, I mean, I'm trying to think of when, uh, when FLCL was airing. I mean, I feel like, I feel like it was in like 2003 or 4 or 2, maybe it was, maybe it was 2002. I can't remember the year exactly that it even aired now. But what I do recall is that even after it had aired, I found that to be a very profound show. Like, it was unlike anything I'd ever seen. I mean, obviously you had like your, you know, your Gundam or your whatever, you know, that was pretty straightforward, but like this FLCL, it was so, it was just so wild, I never saw anything quite like it, so I got stuck up and hung up on that show, you know, like I remember I used to go on online and like look up pictures of Vespas, and I just thought, you know, I, I just thought it was so wild and so crazy, I think when I, you know, when I talk about, I've talked about this before, like when I first started going on 4chan in 2004, I was going on there to look up anime pictures and I believe that I was, you know, FLCL was probably one of the ones I was looking up to. I don't recall ever printing out pictures of FLCL personally myself, but I think that I was probably going on there and I was probably looking up some of that as well, you know, at the time with what I was, you know, with everything else. And so pretty much I was pretty much stuck on 
for the most part, what was on TV, I mean, obviously, I didn't get, I was having dial-up internet at home until 2005. I mean, there was other people, relatives and things who had DSL before that, but, you know, I didn't get anything beyond dial-up until 2005 at home. So, I was going, you know, at that time, then once you're getting on the high-speed internet, you know, but there wasn't, like, streaming really much at the time. So, I was kind of going around, and it w- still wasn't, like, really into anime. I was, it hadn't really grasped me fully yet, but then when I was in high school, you know, I was going to conventions at the time when I was in high school. I was in my special education classes that seemed to have a disproportionate amount of anime fans that were in these classes with me at the time. So then I started kind of getting brought into the fold a little bit more. Obviously, there was like the Naruto and the Bleach. And it was, once again, it was stuff that was kind of airing on, like Cartoon Network, Adult Swim and all that. But there was people there that I was in school with or at these conventions that were more knowledgeable about the series than I was. They knew, you know, they were... They were more into it, like they would really take time to really get fully into these series. And so then when I was in high school, you know, I was, I would, uh, I was introduced to a few different series. I mean, I remember Welcome to the NHK. I probably watched that for the first time in, it's, it's, I'm sure it's been over 10 years since the first time I watched it. It was either like 2007 or 2008. And when I watched that series, it had a profound impact on my life also. I still, I can go back and rewatch it at like, I rewatch it every so often, and I can continue to rewatch that series. I mean, I'm like, it's like every time I rewatch it, I feel like a different. I, it's like I can still feel a relation to it after all these years. Like the first time I watched it, I was like, you know, <laughs> I guess it's been a relative theme of my life to, you know, to sort of have this uh, sort of animosity towards women, you know, that is kind of, uh, you know, can. There's parts of that that are in there, you know, there's the addiction to eroge, <laughs> you know, being really into some of that, uh, the whole neat thing, the, the feelings of, I mean, there's just so much in that series that I can always go back and rewatch it. I don't like to rewatch anything too often because it kind of like makes it a little bit dull or like it kind of, you know, you don't get that same kind of pop, that same kind of like whoosh, you know, when you, if you're doing it too often, but I can rewatch that like every year or so probably and like, just be like, oh shit. Oh, I can totally feel it still. I totally feel it still. Always. And uh, I don't know, that's probably not a good thing. <laughs> but, hey, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Uh, but really, yeah, come to think of it, you know, that was like the late high school period. It was pretty much just like, once again, I was getting expanded a little more of the different series. I was getting introduced to more. People were telling me about different ones I didn't know about. But... It really didn't start popping off for me until I would say like it was really it really came to me around like late 2011. That was around the time you know late 2011, early 2012. That was when I just got so sick of women. You know, like I mentioned, I did the Egg Wars where I said the last woman who I ever really associated with from IRL and not online. That was in late 2011, early 2012 at that time. So after that, kind of blew up in my face and it was a total shit show. I became so angry. I was so angry at women and society and all that stuff. I was just like, you know what? I fucking hate society. I reject society. I don't want anything to do with this society. This I hate it. I hate everybody. I hate everything. I only like what's in anime. That's what I, you know, I want. I want my life in anime to be as cohesion, like as as overlapping as possible. So at that time, that was when I started. You know, some of my first. that was like when I was making a lot of my first uh, torrenting accounts. Like I can go back and look, you know, a lot of my first accounts I was making at the time, you know, can be traced back to like that time period. Although now my Anime Bytes account, which is far superior and is like my ultimate anime account at this point, that was like five years ago, I think, four or five years ago. But I started off, you know, just simple stuff like just going around and gathering, you know, trying to find series that I enjoyed, trying to find things that I was going to get into, trying to find things that looked appealing, I'm going around looking for recommended stuff, and I was just basically, I had my old laptop, I was touring, 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 just gathering up all the anime, getting, you know, figuring out who did the best subs, just going around and just gathering stuff, and, uh, you know, really getting into it, and so I was watching it, and uh, we just were talking about this on the stream last night, you know, one of the first anime that I really got super into at the time, well, this wasn't actually even at the time, I started off watching some other I think I was kind of, I was sort of, when I was getting into torrenting, I, I was rewatching some of the things that I'd already watched in the past, like Yu Yu Hakusho, uh, Inuyasha, um, 
you know, uh, Tenchi Muyo, um, uh, Gurren Lagan, uh, I'm trying to think what else. Just these ones that I've been familiar with to, to already, and but I was kind of just getting familiar with how to, you know, set up MPCHC and the best codec and just my, for my best anime experience because that's just what I was on. I was like, fuck this, I want, I want anime streamed to my brainstem as much as possible, but never streaming because streaming is for plebs, it's for scrubs. I'm going in, getting the best releases as much as possible. Boom, to the brainstem. Boom, boom, boom. Let's keep it coming. But after I started to kind of go out and sort of uh, expand my taste on my own, I got into Hitamari Sketch, and that was like probably my first um, anime of that type that I was into. Uh, to the point where I, you know, bought multiple editions of the physical manga. I, you know, had, I think it was up to like, what was it called? Honeycomb or something? Uh, I think it was like the third season or the third or fourth season was like where it was up to at the time. I don't know if they ever did any more than that, but that's what I had watched through. And I had like the OST. I would listen to the OST constantly. Like I wouldn't listen to anything else. I would just constantly like be wrapping myself in this warm blanket of, you know, this cute girl doing cute thing, pleasantry. Like, oh yes, I hate women so much. 2D women are so much better. And it's like wrapping myself up in this comfortable blanket of this. Even I think it was in 2013. Yes, it was. February 2013, that Valentine's Day, I never had, I still, I can't remember, I think, I think even when I was dating my ex, I'm pretty sure that she, uh, I'm pretty sure we didn't do anything for Valentine's Day, I'm pretty sure she was like, uh, seeing her mother or whatever bullshit she was telling me at the time, I wanna say, I wanna say this was going on, you know, she used to tell me all that stuff when she would be, she would say, oh, I'm gonna go, I gotta go visit my family, and then she'd be going and, uh, presumably, uh, cheating on me as she, you know, I found that she had been doing, uh, eventually. But, so I don't, I still don't think to this day, I don't, I do not believe that I've ever had a Valentine Day thing going out. But in 2013 though, on that particular day, you know, it was my first Valentine's Day where I was 21 years old, because my 21st birthday had been in December 2012. So I was 21 years old, and so I could buy alcohol, and I went to the store and bought a bottle of wine. <clears throat> I went to the fucking grocery store and I bought like a heart cake. And I can't remember, I, mean, I had some kind of like hot food dish or something too, but I sat there in my duplex fucking unair conditioned bedroom with a bottle of wine and some kind of meal. And I sat there with my laptop sitting in front of me on this, my little desk I had there. And I watched through a Hitamari sketch episodes while like basically like toasting my glass. I was like t- tapping the glass up against the fucking uh, screen to be like, uh, you ladies are so wonderful. I mean, I did that. That was something I did, like, legit. And I, you know, nothing exists that I know. That I, there was no, I didn't, I wasn't going to record. It wasn't ironic, you know what I mean? I wasn't doing it for a laugh or a joke. It was, you know, I, I would, like, go and do things like that. I would go on 4chan. I was, you know, just anonymously posting. I would just talk about how 2D supremacy was the ultimate way, and it was the best lifestyle, and it was great, and, uh, I mean, so yeah, that's where I've been. I've been at that point before. I've been to that point. The only reason why I probably do not have a Daki Makura at this time was that back when I wanted one of my waifu, uh, I couldn't find an artist. Well, there was none existing already because I guess she was too too much of a niche character. But when I was going trying to contact Custom Artist Commission to make one for me, uh, like their styles just weren't right. It, It wasn't right. Like it just wasn't... I wasn't going to want a body pillow of my waifu that looked off, you know what I mean? That looked like it was like a fan art, it wasn't the right kind of style, you know what I mean? So, that's kind of where I was at with that. And, I mean, I continued on, you know, I kind of got a little, I mean, obviously, I think my figurines I purchased in like 2014, 2013, 2014. So, I mean, that was kind of where I was at with, like, the waifu stuff, and I got more into it when the third season of Working aired, because that's where my waifu was from, so I kind of went, and I got some merch that was from her, uh, from that, you know, that was coming out with that season, but I pretty much, like, even to this day, I think I've maybe downloaded, or I've gone through, like, maybe three series now in the last, like, three years, like, it was really, once I started dating my ex, you know, well, I should say it was, like, I left 4chan, you know, I had my, I'm done with R9K, so I left 4chan, and I was like, eh, you know, I kind of just, like, 
<clears throat> stopped even wanting to watch anything. I kind of just started laying in bed a lot. Then I went to, <clears throat> you know, Canada for a little while. Then I had the whole uh, Oregon situation. Then I started dating my ex a little bit after that. And so and I just never really got back into it, I guess. I kind of like, I, well, I mean, I fell out of anime and video games for a while. Now I've been back on video games lately because I've been doing a lot of live streaming and it's something that kind of goes with that. So, but, you know, I never really got the hook back in my mouth, so to speak, of kind of getting hooked back onto anime like I had been at once upon a time. And, you know, I don't know. I Like I said, I think maybe it's a good thing. That I, you know, like I said, I've been trying to, I mentioned it in my other video that I did recently, you know, my little, like, uh, my little kind of like, uh, feeling black pill video, where I'm like, I'm trying to not be succumbing to an escapist sort of ideal, where I, could, I definitely could, you know, it'd, it'd be super easy for me to get back into that and be kind of what I was on, but I'm like, shit, you know, I'm getting old, I'm trying to make moves, I'm trying to, climb up the rungs of life ladder, you know, of, of, of uh, trying, trying to do better. And so, you know, that's just something that I know personally for me, you know, once again, like I've stressed this before, I think that the option for people, if they want to do that stuff, I think it should definitely be available. Like fat, ugly, blue hair, hairy, feminist women should not have the say to shut that shit down. I think it should be freely available to all kinds of adults if they would like to have that available to them. But, of course, once again, I do not uh, promote, like, an escapist ideal. I think that we should all try and do the best that we can, try to maximize what we have in our lives. And if shit is not working out right, okay, you know what? We're, you're an adult. You want to do what you're going to do. That's your life. But I think we should all at least give it our best shot. You know what I mean? And in a way, I feel like I probably have. I mean, I've done I've done a lot of great things over the last year and some change now, year and a half or so, and I have had a lot of great opportunities. I'm having more opportunities available coming up to me. I've really, I really like, in a way, I'm kind of having, you know, the, I'm having like the most cool part of my life that I've ever had, but at the same time, you know, I have, in the past, I've, you know, basically almost died trying to give my all to the right path in life, you know, being a hardworking uh, you know, good stand-up guy and having a woman in my life and having my place and all that stuff and all of it just, I just got chewed up and spit out, you know what I mean? So, like, I probably would have plenty of reason to just say, fuck everything, you know, I'm already black-pilled anyway, so fuck it, what do you, let's just, let's just fully go full hedonism and whatever. But, I don't know, I'm still, uh, by me not doing that, by me still trying to, you know, shoot them threes trying to dunk even when life has uh, repeatedly stomped me into a fine pace and shit on me. It's like, you know, I've still been able to do some great things or at least some things that I found very enjoyable, very pleasant and very nice. So yeah, I'm uh, but you know, I'm down for my anime people, but I'm just not where I once was in that regard. Now you're probably thinking that's all I'm going to say on this episode since I've spent this entire episode talking about it, which I didn't really intend to do initially, but now I'm going to keep it going here because I, that was not all I have to talk about. Um, one other thing I wanted to say here, this will be kind of like a little blip in between before my next main thing to conversate about. Um, the royal wedding took place, what was that, yesterday morning? Whatever, the morning of the 19th, was that it? I kind of didn't actually watch it at all, to be honest. But, um, you know, I get some secondhand news exposure from time to time. I get this news that'll come on, and I will, uh, you know, hear it on the radio or the or the TV station if it's on. Like, you know, my, my auntie, she keeps that on quite a bit, and so sometimes I catch some, some whatever. So, yeah, the royal wedding, it was all they're talking about on TV. It's, oh, it's going on and on and on and on. I couldn't give less of a shit. It's a lot of funny memes going on about, like, oh, you know, fucking Prince Harry having to marry a, you know, basically used up old hag, and, uh, you know, she's, uh, <laughs> she was, like, a manipulator in her last relationship and fucking, like, fucked up her ex-husband's life, and so, and she wants to be, like, the most number one feminist now. I read that earlier today. She's like, oh, I can't wait to be the most prominent royal feminist and all this shit. It's like, oh, my goodness. You know, what a, what a horrible, horrible decision to... <laughs> to, like the worst possible woman you could probably choose. But um, what's the fallout that I saw from this? The number one thing that I took in from that was there was a woman, some black woman, tweeted out so simply, so, so elegantly, so innocently, she tweeted out saying like, 
you know, basically Meghan Markle's like a fucking old bust, you know, she used some real flowery, you know, comforting language, but the reality of it, she basically said, Meghan Markle's this old busted hag, and, uh, you know, she basically rolled the, rode the fucking cock carousel, and now she's a princess. So it's all the women out there, just don't ever settle for anything less than a princess. And, uh, when I, when, when I caught wind of this, I think it had like, I can't remember, like, well, it was funny. I think the first time I actually saw it, it had like 20,000 likes, and I was like, oh my goodness, that's horrible. And literally within like an hour, I went back at it, and it was like 40,000 likes. And it just was climbing ridiculously. The last time I looked at it, it was like 285,000 or something now. And, man, that just does not sum it up any any better of the current situation that we live in. You know, women, they just want to, uh, they literally just want, <laughs> it's never enough, you know what I mean? And nothing is ever enough for them, ever. This is another point, I guess, that that is uh, good for being an escapist, if, you, if that's your lifestyle. If you want to be an escapist in anime, I mean, like, you cannot please them. Like, we were, I, I went and looked up on stream the other day, I was like, you know, because remember, I made the song Ho's Scheming last year, and I talk in that song, I say, Even a billionaire ain't enough, they lie and they ch- trap you and take half your stuff, and set you in front of the judge, and not just the money you want, they want in your property, that's why I break them off properly, can't let a greedy line bitch be stopping me. But that was about a story that happened, like, I want to say, t- three years ago, maybe? So I went on Google on my stream last night. I'm like, what was that guy's name again? No, there's another fucking billionaire getting taken to the cleaners, 492 million pounds of taken from him, and his fucking wife, like he's, I don't know how old he was, he's not like a, he's not like a 90 year old guy or anything. He was like, uh, maybe in his like 50s or 60s or something, but his wife was like this ugly, middle age, used up, you know, dried out hag, and I'm just thinking to myself, like, why? What? Could you even imagine? Could you even imagine being a literal like you'd have to like let's say you won the fucking like lottery jackpot like five times like the number one fucking lottery jackpot and it'd have to be up like I mean that's like that's just such an incredible amount of wealth and prosperity just like it would take infinite bazillion lifetimes for the average person to even get that much and you're a fucking used up old hag and that's not even enough you need to fucking take all that and you still need to take all that and then try to find an even better guy like the you, like you can get to number one like the woman could be at the number one guy in the whole fucking world and just still be looking around is anybody else number one are you number one now are you number one now are you number one now that's just how it is you know what i mean it's just how it is so, like, and now you have the average fucking, you know, chick that's looking like a melting candle, looking like motherfucking built like, uh, fucking Zoidberg from Futurama with no shell, sitting around covered in all kinds of shitty, ugly tattoos, fucking disgusting, washed out, mediocre, maintained hair dye, no hygiene, anything, and she's like, oh, I gotta have the, you know, oh yeah, you're right, yeah, if he's not king, if he's not literally a king, I'm just gonna fucking never breed, and that's why you have birth rates lowest birth rate in the last like 30 years that was just in the news the other day this is where we're at guys and it's not good it's very not good and uh so that's why i can't ever neg people that if they are if that's like if they shoot their shot if they're shooting and trying to hit that three point and it, it's going off the rim boom 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 they can't sink it and uh they're just like man fuck this shit i understand the frustration we have record levels of men who are just turning away from this shit and saying you know fuck this shit it's bullshit this whole like it's all fucked up and i can understand that but you know still all the same i'm still kind of holding my feet to the fire and just being like hey i'm gonna keep going you know i'm not i don't have any clear like guaranteed success inside i don't think anybody does nowadays we all kind of have to like forge our own paths you know but i'm like fuck it man let's keep on riding you know let's keep on uh keep on doing the old uh clint eastwood just you know bucking the horse and i ho i ho i'll throw the old dusty planes and Give it another few years, and if shit's still the fucked up, well, maybe I'll maybe I'll toss my hat in and uh, you know sit around and get let the Zuckbot AI just give me like infinite blowjobs all day and be fucking gang banging like ten different uh, super hot anime supermodels all day. Maybe I don't know, but in any case, that's that. I just uh, ooh man, I was like I just saw that and I was like oh no. Is this by design? Are we, cont- I don't know, like, we gotta be thought patrolling so much harder. Like, we just, we gotta keep going hard on these thoughts, man. We gotta be thought patrolling. They're taking, they're taking down music. They're fucking deleting, uh, XXX Tentacion. They're deleting Red Hot Chili Peppers. They're deleting all this music off streaming services because 
It's like there's like 30 year old allegations for some of these artists that like, oh, he might have did, he might have said a bad word to a woman one time, fucking delete him from the internet. So we need like this is the counterculture right here. This is the heartbeat of the underground is to be thought patrolling, going as hard on thoughts as possible. They need to bend the knee. They need to submit. We need to stop taking this bullshit and letting their fucking whorishness drive our society into the fucking dirt. We gotta, we gotta, you know, stand tall, pound our chests like wild men, and say, hey, we're not gonna take it. You know, we ain't gonna take it. Oh, we're not gonna take it anymore and that's not advocating ain't for anything bad okay i'm just saying as our spiritually you know <laughs> don't don't fucking think i'm saying something bad because i'm not i'm just saying you know we're all being pussy everything's pussified these days you know we need to just like you know say listen here thoughty you're a roasty thought and i'm not gonna conversate i'm not listening to whatever crap is coming out of your mouth it's not going into my brain it's bouncing off i'm rubber you're glue you know, boom, I, I ain't, I ain't down with what you're, I ain't picking up what you're putting down, I ain't buying what you're selling, you know, dig it, but, um, and then also, yes, uh, the other story of note at this time, although I don't, uh, hasn't been a whole lot coming out about it, I guess, it hasn't been quite as, uh, much to talk about as some past things, but, excuse me, a couple days ago, there was the, the, uh, Texas shooting by uh, Dimitrios Pogov Cheese or whatever his name was. And, uh, still haven't seen a whole lot about it, but, uh, in the last day or so, they do have a, a motive that they said has come out. I believe this was the same. I, th I think this is what it was, because I guess there was a shooting in Atlanta at like a graduation or something. I'm not so sure about that. So whatever it was, I think this was the, uh, I could be conflating these stories here because it happened on the same day. But I'm pretty sure this is what it was. It was the guy from Texas. You know, he was, uh, he was, he had like this Instagram account where he had like vaporwave aesthetics. And so I haven't really seen anybody trying to conflate vaporwave with evilness or anything, but he had like a bi he was bisexual pride and he had like communist, fascist, Satanist. Like he had like all these different pins and stuff on his jacket and, uh, whatever. I don't know. So, but in any case, from what I've heard, uh, supposedly this was a, there was a girl that he had had a crush on or something and she had rejected him. And I guess, like, he was really persistent, like, oh, please date me, please date me. And uh, I guess she just, like, told him to fuck off, and that was, like, the instigation. Like, apparently he, she was one of the people that was murdered in the school shooting. Um, I think, I, you know what, maybe I better check that out real quick here, because I feel like, was that the same shooting? I am just not totally sure here. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Okay, yep, yeah, it was, yep. Texas school shooting gunman targeted my daughter because she rejected him, grieving mom says. Okay. See, yeah, that's just where we're at with America is there's just so many shootings going on constantly that it's hard to keep track of which shootings which shooting. <laughs> so, sorry about that. You know I don't edit shit in egg wars, but... So, yeah. Here's my take on that, you know. Um, I think that that's really fucked up. I mean, you know, of course, I never advocate anything bad. You know, my, my deepest sympathies are with the families of the morning at this time, of course. But I'm going to tell you like this. It kind of brings me back to my own rejection issues when I was a younger person. I mean, I can still have rejection issues to this day, but there's certain things about rejection, okay? There's certain things. And when you're rejected in school, I personally feel that being rejected as a young man in school is a sort of uh, like a, it's in a way, this is just my opinion, I feel like it's a lot more like, uh, there's a lot more power behind that rejection as opposed to trying to date as an older, you know, out of school guy. Cause I can tell you, you know, when I was in school, high school, college, and I was going and approaching women and I was like, you know, trying to take an interest in certain women that I was attracted to, trying to date these women. And it was always, you know, like rejection. There's like different levels of things. First off, you have like your, you're in high school and you go to a chick and you ask her to prom or you ask her out to the movie or the, football game or whatever, and she says, you know, fuck off, creep, you're fucking loser, nerd, get out of here. Okay, that never really bothered me. Now, I did use it as, like, in a way I would be, you know, as time went on and I sort of had this, you know, like, fuck normies, I hate normies, and fucking, you know, that sort of mindset, I would use that as be like, yeah, that fucking girl called me a fucking loser, ugly creep, yeah, and she didn't even, you know, it was like, she didn't just, they don't just say no, she said you're a fucking ugly loser creep, and was, so there was that, but... 
the I believe more damaging uh, rejections would occur when a woman would sort of like bring you into her orbit, and you see this a lot. Like you, you know, you're like, oh golly gosh, Sally, oh golly gosh, can I take you to the prom? And then uh, you know she'd be like, you know, it, the thing is, is when you're a young guy too. Nowadays it's different. You probably have more ability to get red pilled at a younger age, but when you're that age and stuff, you know, back then. It's like, you know, you're just kind of taking what these women are saying at face value and, you know, so you kind of, it's easy to kind of get worked into the orbit and you're like, well, gosh, maybe if I just, you know, I think maybe she wants to, but I'm not sure and, ooh, you know, and then, you know, eventually she has to come out and tell you that, no, I'm not attracted to you and no, you know, but you've probably put money into her, you've probably put time and energy into her that went nowhere and then you become uh, uh, upset about that. But the thing about school, when you're at school and you're approaching a woman uh, and you're trying to date and you're getting rejected... You, it's like a spectacle, you know, and this is especially, they said in this article that he like basically went up to her like in front of the whole class and she said no, it's a spectacle and the spectacle is, is, you know, you could be a guy like me, like, you know, like let's say you're out of school or whatever and you're going around like I was, I was going in a cold approach to women at like Starbucks, Chipotle, these different, you know, clubs, bars, whatever, I was going and approaching and getting, you know, turned down, but I get turned down and that sucks and that hurt, you know, maybe it hurts my ego or makes me feel like a little shitty or like I'm not a good enough guy or whatever. But I walk away from that situation, you know what I mean? I'm okay, I'm out of there, I'm going, whatever, you know, I'm walking away, I shed that, you know, and I move on. But when you're in school, you're in this situation where like you're in this fixed environment, you know, you're in this cemented environment for a certain period of time. So you're going and you're like, oh, hey, Sally, you want to go to the prom? Ew, you fucking creep, no, and then everybody laughs at you, and then you're that guy that Sally called the fucking creep, and you know, so then, like, your social proof drops, because this is your social, you know, whether you like it or not, like, you are in sort of a social circle that is encompassing these people, you know, on a regular basis, so, like, you're basically, like, you're, suddenly you have that stigma attached to you, and your social proof is going like this, and so if you had, like, if you could have maybe, like, you know, gotten with a chick before that was, like, looks match, you know, maybe like, you know, more like on your level, you know, your level has just dropped and now you might not be able to, you know, you might just be fucked. You might just be totally isolated and uh, whatever and just, you know, fucking uh, facing stigma and you're kind of off out in, uh, you know, loser outcast world now. So, of course, that doesn't, that absolutely does not excuse any kind of, you know, like retribution that would be taken because of that. <sighs> But it is, I mean, that's just how I see it. I think it's a more powerful thing because that's like same thing. Like if you're trying to, if you were at a job now, there was only one girl that I've ever worked with that I could recall that I found even marginally attractive. And, uh, you know, I had a little thing with her where I was like kind of like chatting her up back and forth and it never really went anywhere because I thought trying to date somebody that you're working with was weird. And I knew a rejection was coming anyway because I kind of felt it out a little bit and I was like, eh. Yeah, that's going to be fucked up if I try and, like, date this chick and we're working together and it's going to be, like, an environment that's going to be really unpleasant to be in. But it'd be, like, the same kind of thing. Like, you know, you're working with, like, uh, you know, a dozen different people or whatever and all of a sudden you're like, yo, what's up, babe? You know, hey, you want to go get a, you want to go get a drink sometime? You know, you're the chick you're working with. Like, kind of, you know, keep it on the DL because you don't want to be that guy who's, like, trying to hit on girls at work or whatever. But you think maybe there's a little chemistry going on there and she says, nah, fuck off, creep. And then all of a sudden, you know, a week later, she's dating, you know, the other guy that works on the other assembly line or works in the other department or whatever, you know, fucking Brad, Thad, Chad Mixon <laughs> that's over in the other department. You know, all of a sudden she's getting piped down by him on the regular. You know, it's it's like you in that group, like, us, you, they might not be telling you to your face, but people are going to be talking behind your back and they're going to be like, oh, yeah, dude, the fucking guy from that department, dude, he's such a fucking dweeb. Yeah, he got turned down, turned down by by Sally. Now she's getting piped out by Chad Thad McBradson every single day, dude. Oh, what a fucking dweeb. <laughs> and, you know, then you, you're you seen as, like, that guy that, you know, your social proof goes like this. You're not invited to the, you know, the company picnic or you're not invited to drinks with the couple you know, They think you're going to make it weird. Like, oh, that guy was trying to, like, fuck that chick and, you know, he's not cool enough. So... It's like one of those things where you can't just just walk away from that rejection. It's something that's kind of held over you, and that that so it can kind of like be in a more of a uh, burden on you than just like a fucking you know bad Tinder match or a bad OK Cupid whatever you know something like that. So I mean I've been there, man. I've been there, and obviously like I, I've had my history of kind of uh, having outbursts and issues, but. Just a sad situation, man. It's just a sad situation. And, um, we were, t- I mean, we were talking about this last night on the stream. 
I've mentioned this before, you know, I was never a very stable person myself. You know, I've kind of, I never really have been in my entire life, to be honest. But when I was young, we didn't have smartphones. We didn't have iPhone. I mean, like, I would, that was just coming out when I was just getting out of high school. Like, I was, iPhones were coming around then. Like, people didn't really have them. But there, you know, even with the iPhones and stuff, like, there was no social media. There was, you know, Facebook was just picking up, you know, around the time I was getting out of high school. I mean, I remember, like, I was just, I had Facebook in high school, and, like, a lot of people didn't really have it. People were still on MySpace at that time. Of course, I mean, I'm coming from, like, a smaller town, so it's something that's not quite as much, uh, you know, maybe we're a little bit behind some of the other big cities and things like that. But, I mean, nowadays you have Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. So, like, there's people who I talk to who are, like, seniors in high school, you know, that uh, that have found me on 4chan, you know, for over the time or whatever. And, like... They'll, you know, everything in high school, like, they'll have, like, everybody's like this. You know, everybody's having their phone out. They're recording everything. All they're posting on Instagram for likes. They're posting for retweets. They're posting. So, for me personally, I was very much an outcast when I was in high school. I was very ostracized. I didn't, you know, I was very headbutting, clashing with everybody all the time. I didn't like anybody. I hated my teachers. I hated everybody. I just hated school in general. And I was very antisocial. And I kind of still am antisocial, you know, in the sense that I find society is very sick and very having a lot of problems, and it's uh, kind of, I don't see eye to eye with it. But I can just imagine, I mean, just think about that, you know, just imagine, like, being in that situation where, you know, you're fucking, you know, you're a high school guy, you know, look smacksing or whatever, whatever, you, maybe you're not even red pill, whatever the case is, you're just a high school guy, you don't know any better, you're just, you know, you think maybe Sally and you have some chemistry or whatever, so you go, and you're like, oh, Sally, will you go to the prom with me? And then, unbeknownst to you, there's like, you know, all the popular kids are all, like, fucking recording you from, like, behind a, a wall or something. And all of a sudden, she's like, ew, fuck off, nerd. You fucking loser creep. And everybody starts laughing. And then they, uh, you know, repost it on Twitter and Instagram. And you're all over the whole school. Everybody gets to watch you get rejected over and over again. I mean, shit. I probably, I mean, I already wanted to drop out anyway. I mean, I probably would have, I mean, I don't know. I would have not found that to be, you know, I, I can't... I probably would have fucking flipped on some people. I'm not saying I would have done anything, like, super bad, but, I mean, I would have found that to be very, uh, a very bad situation to be in, and I would have wanted to get out of school probably even more than I already did. But once again, I mean, that's just a little bit of input on, from my end, of course. I'm not trying to... There's no there's no excuse you can make for violence. You know, it's a terrible, terrible tragedy, and I hope that, uh, you know, I hope that they are able to, uh, you know, maybe start... Maybe somebody will, uh, you know, start taking the time to look at the issues that are facing our society and try to start doing some uh, work to repair those issues so that we can, you know, but I I don't see that happening too much. I don't really see anybody trying to address any true root causes of any problems that are going on. I see people uh, that, like, now the news articles are literally just repeal the Second Amendment. Okay, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not playing around anymore. Yeah, give me the fucking guns now. Like, and then, um, I don't know, I, I don't think, uh, you know, it's it's not a great state of affairs, it's not a great uh, state of affairs, it seems like nobody wants to, people that are, uh, <clears throat> there's too many people benefiting from the illness and the sickness that's going on right now, it's, it's advancing too many high level agendas, so nobody wants to be the one that has to say, oh, here's the real root problems, you know, the fucking mental health, maybe it's too much technology going on, you know, there's, uh, our, our school systems are fucked up. Everything's fucked up right now. There's a lot of shit that's just really fucked up, and nobody wants to take the time to try and fix it. They want to just continue pushing their the agendas from the top down and fucking squash us into some sort of uh, paste that is easily malleable and easy to control and uh, serves a higher purpose for the uh, evil people in this world as opposed to what is actually beneficial for us as a, as a people and in our world. But, oh well, I guess, uh, you know, we all, every single day that we're up and we're at it and we're doing something and we're going around and we're, we're being aware of what's going on, we're keeping an awareness about us, we're keeping our wits about us, we're not submitting and to the, to the base, primal, hedonistic level of brain activity that is being pushed upon us by the powers that be, as long as we're continuing to, you know, keep ourselves, uh, you know, in the right mindset, staying the right path and trying to maximize the best things that we can do as much as possible and not laying down and rotting, you know, we uh, that's the best case for us to continue on in trying to resolve some of these issues that are going on in this world. At the very least, if uh, <coughs> if the fire's burning and everything just kind of fucking 
is lost to the wind. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll have yelled out into the void loud enough at some aspect in this universe that some uh, descendant that might come across our warnings will try and heed them better. Although you'd think that we would be in that position now since we have such unlimited access to information from centuries and centuries. But obviously that's not doing much since the people who control everything right now don't, that's not, the truth is not conducive to their agenda. So, but at least, at least it's, you know, it's something. It's something for some of us to know kind of the, the scope of things. All right, but in any case... Let's uh, let's keep on just trying to do our best, everybody, and uh, not succumb to anime escapism, but maybe maybe a little bit, but uh, or you know whatever we we have we have work to do out in this world, and let's keep on facing forward to the future with a big old bright smile on our face. Mm mm mm. Let's do uh let's do what we gotta do, baby. Let's uh let's do our thing. Can't believe I made this this thing last this long. This this drink. I guess I wasn't that thirsty. Well, I guess it was kind of longer than I intended anyway. But in any case, my friends, uh, sorry for the irregular uploads and uh, everything. You know, if you're not following the Egg White live streams channel, I have been able to stream on there for the last month or so now. So you should check that out because I try to stream on there. They're fairly regularly. I'm also streaming on twitch.tv slash not Eggman, N-O-T-E-G-G-M-A-N at the, at this time. So, you know, I'm, my numbers have been going up on there. We're almost at 500 followers on there. Twitch has given me a sub button. You know, if you go sub to me on Twitch, you get an Abigail Shapiro face emote. And maybe if I become a Twitch partner, there'll be more unlocked. But if I become a Twitch partner, then they'll probably departner me instantly because I'm so, uh, I'm such a wild man, you know. I go a little too hard on some things, but uh, who knows, man. Like I said, we take the good, we take the bad, we take them both, and there you have the facts of life. All right. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Egg Wars, guys. Much love, much appreciation. Even if you're, uh, you know, even if you think I'm a fucking wacko, whack job, weirdo man, you know what? Let, I'm just trying to bring some good energy. I'm so negative all the time. I like, when I can, I try to, like, just, like, uh, let it off like a fucking, uh, like a noxious gas into the atmosphere to try and, you know, to, even though I'm, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's like the, there's so much black pill out there. We gotta, you know, we're gonna go crazy if we don't have a little bit of, uh, some good vibes going on too. So I do wish you the best no matter what. Unless you're like some really horrible, awful criminal or something, then, uh, then I don't. But in any case, I keep on going on and on. Until next time, my friends, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Egg Wars, and I will catch you next time. All right. Peace out, dudes. Sounds from the void. Hey.